Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair, so that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. You will have to excuse my tardiness. <laughs> I'm wearing a vest and it is the hottest day of the year here today so I will be sweating throughout this video. I can't have my windows open because you'll hear everything going on outside and just as I decided to film a van pulled up and someone's moving in or something. I don't know. They're doing their job. It's fine. So please bear with me and forgive me. <laughs> Today I want to share with you some products that I used to swear by, some ingredients that I used to swear by for my skin. I thought they were the best things in the world, holy grails, things I thought my skin needed, but in the end I just stopped using them. Because for me, I think they were actually doing more harm than good. So yeah, I'm gonna share these products and ingredients with you, but please remember, I'm always talking from my own personal experience, so if you use any of this stuff and it's really, really working for you, please continue to use it. Okay, so let's talk about a clay mask. Using a clay mask if you don't really need it. I still actually use a clay mask and I'll use one every so often, but only for occasions where I want to look less oily. And also when I feel my skin is looking a bit congested, like today on a hot day like today, I would probably use a clay mask. But sometimes I can be bothered and sometimes I'm just like, ugh. You've got to apply it, then you have to let it dry, and then you have to wash it off again. It's this huge deal, and there's usually a bit of clay mask left in my facial hair. You know, it's, it's just a big faff. But I must say clay masks in general are quite good for oily skin. So they can take away the excess sebum and oil and give our skin the appearance of smaller looking pores. The most common clays you'll find in clay masks are bentonite and cowling clay. Pink clay or even green clay, there does seem to be like trending clays. And even charcoal is a common ingredient now mixed in with clay in clay masks. And that's because the idea is that these ingredients are able to latch onto that dirt, that excess sebum and oil, and you're able to rinse it away. However, could these masks actually be doing more harm than good. Well, it depends. For example, if you have dry skin. These masks can really dry you out if you pick the wrong one. For example, bentonite clay could really, really dry you out whilst it's amazing for oily skin people. For those on the drier side, it could maybe remove a bit too much sebum and oil. So oily skin people can pretty much use whatever, but for you drier skinned types, white clay is a really, really good option for you. It's a lot finer, like it's um, more, not granulated, but it's like jet milled clay almost. That can help control that really just that surface layer of oils that will help with those excess oils without overly drying your skin. If you're dry though, it's very unlikely that you're gonna have all these excess oils. You might be combination like myself. So one thing I will never do is put a clay mask on my cheeks. I'll always put it on my T-zone. Depending on the mask, again, I have a white clay one that I use everywhere. The majority of the time though, it's just for that oily T-zone. If I put it on my cheeks, they go so, so dry. Another reason these could be doing more harm than good is if you're letting them dry on your skin completely. I see a lot of these videos and pictures where people have let a clay mask just set on their skin and they're like doing this and it's like cracking and it's, it's the worst feeling. It feels itchy, it feels tight, it, it's really not nice. But this is also drawing out more and more oils and leaving you drier and drier. The longer it's on your skin, the most likely the drier you're getting. Another thing that bothers me about these clay masks is that sometimes they come with the word detox attached to them. The idea of detoxing makes people think the longer you leave on this mask, the more impurities are coming out, the more of a chance you're giving this product to detox your skin. Detox doesn't mean anything. You can't detox through your skin. So 100% use a clay mask, but make sure you're using it in the right areas and you're using the right kind for your skin. Let's talk about high percentage actives now. I have this obsession with moving up in my skincare percentages. You know, like I really want to get to a 2.5% retinol, a 20% vitamin C, for example. We now have the option to go up to 100% niacinamide. I would never do that, but you get the idea. I feel like there's this idea that the higher up you're going with your percentages, the more of a result you're going to see from those active ingredients. And this is the issue is that companies do lead us to believe that the higher the percentage of the active ingredients, the more effective they are, the better your results will be. But not just actives, we have this obsession with, unless you know a product is high up on the ingredient list, it's not effective and it's not worth being in a product. So there's a skip outside and they're, they're really going for it. So please excuse them. <laughs> there's this other idea that if the key ingredient is under the preservative in the ingredient list, that the whole brand and product is a scam and that you're not actually gonna benefit from that active ingredient. This is all stuff that I believed, bearing in mind until two weeks ago. <laughs> Higher concentrations don't always mean better or more effective. Lower 
lower concentrations doesn't mean it's a terrible product either. I really, really want you to check out Annalisa who goes by Skin Perspective on Instagram. She is a cosmetic formulator whose profile is just such a wealth of knowledge from the point of view of somebody who actually makes these products and plays with these ingredients and knows how they work. She recently posted this picture along with a very detailed caption explaining why higher percentage doesn't mean better. So she explains that every single ingredient is supplied with a range of concentration for its use so that they are safe to use, but also functional and effective in that percentage range. She mentions that there are a lot of ingredients that work perfectly well in their lower percentages that don't need to be high up on the ingredient list or nor should they be high up on the ingredient list. Some examples she gives is uh, sodium hyaluronate and retinol. And in fact, your skin probably doesn't need these in those higher percentages that a lot of brands are pushing us to graduate onto. I think a great example of this is the recent launch from The Ordinary and their 100% niacinamide powder. This is a powder that you meant to add to things like your serums, I was gonna say your moisturizers, that would be awful, but your essences, toners, dissolving that powder. Niacinamide has been proven to be highly effective at 5%. That's all you need. So why do we want or need anything higher when 5% is gonna do the job for you? Do you know what I mean? It's a bit like, I feel like we've all been misled to believe that um, the higher the better, the, the higher the percentage the more it's going to work you know and I feel like this is where things could start to get tricky for us because we're wanting to move on to these higher percentages to a point where our skin could start reacting negatively to these high percentages I'm probably not going to touch that 100% niacinamide because I know that will put me off but I also know I don't need to use 100% niacinamide because I've been using a 5 and more recently um, a 10% a 12 10 or 12% niacinamide that's been working perfectly for me I switch between the two I don't feel like I'm losing out if I'm using a 5% instead of the 12% you know so I feel like the it, it's this whole thing where the brands are pushing us to buy again something we don't really need and leading us to believe that is better. Oh, let's talk about the latest trending ingredients: bakachoy, bakachol, bakachol. I don't know. I don't care. But what I do know is that a lot of people think it's a great alternative to retinol, but it's really marketed as a natural retinol. And there's so much misleading language that some people would think that it's under the retinoid family, but it's a natural version. It's not, that's it. That's the segment done, let's move on. No, there's more. Whilst this ingredient that I can't pronounce is promising, it's promising. It's misleading to say that it's an amazing natural alternative to retinol because it's, it's not. There's just not the evidence, the science, the studies there to back it up. I believe there has been two studies about bakachoy, bakachol. So how is this promising ingredient maybe doing more harm than good? So in my very personal opinion, this is not completely irritation free as a lot of brands like to market it as. Whilst it is a little bit gentler, it's not gonna make your skin strip away, it's not gonna dry you out, you may still experience some redness with this. Lab Muffin Beauty Science Michelle Wong has an amazing article all about this. And according to a study, one thing they did see was the redness that you get with retinol. They saw this in Bacchol. <laughs> God, I should have looked before I start this video. And again, in my very personal experience, I feel like it's a waste of time. Why use a natural alternative to retinol when retinol is perfectly safe to use and there are ways you can use it without getting this immediate irritation. You can buffer it. You start on lower percentages. You're, I feel like you're sacrificing these potentially amazing results on a promising ingredient when there's just retinol you know? It might be a good product to use for people who are getting into retinol. Do I think you should be using it instead of retinol? No. And also this has only been compared to retinol. It doesn't even come close to tretinoin. I feel like people are always looking for these natural, safer alternatives. So this ingredient, but safer. Your cosmetics are safe. Retinol is safe. Sometimes synthetics are just better. They're more predictable. And we know the results. We know the long-term results of retinol. So yeah, maybe if you're just getting into it, start with this but, oh my God, I'm not even gonna pronounce it. Start with this and then work your way onto retinol. Let's talk about toners. We all know I love toners. And we know they have a bit of a bad reputation from dermatologists and people who have used really crap toners in the past. And that's because astringents and toners originally started as two different things. But I feel like when I was a teenager, they kind of merged into one thing. A lot of astringents were renaming themselves toners. You also don't need a toner. We all know that. 
So yeah, the bad reputation comes from old fashioned toners and astringents containing a lot of heavy, heavy alcohols and salicylic acid as well. And as a combination, they were just really, really drying. It's not like an exfoliating toner that you get today. Now I want to say one thing here quickly before I move on that denatured alcohol isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when it's so high up in a product like a toner, it's drying, it is stripping because you don't have those moisturizing ingredients in with it. I get a lot of comments that are like, oh, that moisturizer has denatured alcohol high up on the ingredient list. Yeah, Yes, but it's not going to dry you out because it's literally in a moisturizer. It's in a product that's there to moisturize your skin. In this case, it's probably more likely that's being used to help the ingredients penetrate your skin. And a lot of denatured alcohol evaporates off the skin anyway. So even though modern day toners are seen as a hydrating stage, the old fashioned toners were nothing like that. And you still get those astringents that creep onto the shelves and call themselves like cleansers or toners. But my issue with toners is when they are exfoliating toners and just marketed as a toner. And whilst it's absolutely fine to use an H a BHA every day of a certain percentage if you work your way up. Initially, it can cause some real irritation. And I've seen this loads on TikTok and Instagram. People with these new skincare routines and they're using these exfoliating toners every single day. And they're usually a lot younger as well. So you know they haven't been using these for years and years. We associate toners with an everyday use product. You know, we know the order of our skincare. We know how many times a week we should be using each product. Cleansers twice a day maximum. Exfoliators two to three times a week, toners if you have one twice a day every single day, but exfoliating toners is an exfoliation stage, is an AHA, BHA. So we have this idea that when the product says toner, that is an everyday use product, and really it isn't, and I feel like this is really down to the brand's marketing. For example, Pixie Glow Tonic. It's not my favorite product personally, but it's called a tonic rather than a toner. This is an AHA product, so it, seeing that word tonic kind of makes you take a look at the ingredients and what it actually contains, and lets you know that this is something a little bit different than a toner. And as I said, whilst it may be fine to use every day, not for everyone, not straight away. As Cassandra Bankson says, turn and learn. Have a look what's in these products. I get loads of comments saying I'm using my toner every day. It's starting to irritate my skin. And it turns out it's like a glycolic acid or a salicylic acid toner. And it's like that toner is an exfoliating toner. And I do wish these brands would make it crystal clear their difference between a hydrating toner and a, an exfoliating toner. Okay, I need to stop. I need to open the windows and put a fan on. Let me know any products that you used to absolutely swear by that you kind of started to stop using. Leave those in the comments down below, but that is it from me now, guys. I will see you next time.